yes um good evening and uh, namaste welcome to this the uh, 37th uh, episode of guru mantan a series of 50 discussions with uh, educationist thinkers happening every saturday 7 pm to 8 pm as you all know the guru mantan talks are organized under the aegis of the vivekananda institute for leadership development we lead which is an initiative of the swami vivekananda youth movement uh, we lead's mission is to develop human and social capital for nation building by enhancing the potential of individuals and institutions across the uh, development sector uh, we lead engages uh, broadly with four sectors the government ngo corporates the community in addition to other sectors as well uh, guru mantan is a platform for teachers to share discuss debate and learn about diverse perspectives and practices in the field of education across the world as always the format of the talk would be that the guest speaker would speak for about uh, 25 to 30 minutes followed by a moderated q and a and then there would be a closing remarks and a vote of thanks <clears throat> and today it's a, a pleasure and privilege to have uh, uh, professor s ayyappan as our uh, guest speaker uh, professor ayyappan is a distinguished scientist and the former director general indian council of agricultural research and secretary to the government department of agricultural research and education uh, he presently works as the chancellor of the central agricultural university manipur and the chairman of the karnataka science and technology academy kstu and he would be uh, talking about agriculture and education in india a pleasure and privilege uh, to have you sir on board and over to you uh, now sir thank you very much good evening to everybody uh, shri um, venkatraman shri ramesh venkatraman shri praveen mr kollegal sharma madam pratima all all the participants and delegates good evening at the outset i'd like to thank uh, the we lead vekananda institute for leadership development and uh, initiative of the swami vekananda youth movement mysore for this opportunity and uh, i am told the audience largely comprises of uh, school teachers and students and some researchers to all of you a warm uh, welcome and greeting so this interaction this is an interaction session uh, that i would do with a set of slides and uh, welcome to this uh, this uh, theme of agriculture and education in india we are all uh, familiar many of us come from rural backgrounds and uh, we are aware of the agricultural patterns in our villages and today's topic though it's mainly focused on education all of you are educationists we thought we'll bring a flavor of agriculture and farming to you because uh, without agriculture there is no culture all of you would agree best of the cultures is agriculture so with this introduction i'd like to take you to take you to a few events in indian agriculture and happenings now and the importance of agriculture in our education system we we have been asking who is important in the society whether it's the teacher doctor lawyer questions go on all of us unanimously finally agree it is the farmer that's why we call it as farmer first and uh, no less than the mahatma said that to a man with an empty stomach food is god there is no other god except food that's the importance uh, mahatma even at that time before independence gave to agriculture these few photographs friends are from bangalore itself on the le- top left you would see mahatma gandhi with uh, the founder of banaras hindu university pandit madan mohan malviya both of them came to adugodi in bangalore in adugodi is the national dairy research institute that is in 1927 that means nearly uh, almost 95 years back and he was in the thick of the freedom struggle but then he thought it fit that agriculture should gain first priority and he came there he came to this place you can see maharaja mysore also and then he spent two weeks undergoing training and while going in the visitors book somebody wrote wrote am i audible yes sir you are audible sir okay now somebody wrote that uh, mk gandhi barrister from sabarmati he cut the world barrister he wrote farmer farmer from sabarmati so friends this uh, with this introduction now we are in the times of uh, covid 
an unprecedented pandemic. All of us are impacted, whether we are in agriculture, or industry, or education, or health, everywhere. And first time for last one year, we are seeing a reverse migration of people. Every time people migrated from villages to cities, now, now we are seeing city to rural village migration. And that's an opportunity for agriculture at the same time, challenge to provide the, the, those hands with new jobs. Now, only two sectors in this pandemic all over the world have been ab absolutely active irrespective of what is happening day and night, and that is health and food sector. Industry has been impacted, business has been affected, I mean, all that you are seeing, but these two sectors are continuously working. In another 10 years, friends, we are now working in the context of sustainable development goals. United Nations, earlier we were having the Millennium Development Goals till 2015. 2015 to 2030 is the Sustainable Development Goals. I'll show you that. Then we also have in the country two new policies. One is the National Education Policy 2020. You must be reading, hearing about it continuously. Also, science, technology, innovation policy. Science, technology, we have been talking. But science, technology, innovation policy is another thing. And I, today, coming from Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, would like to bring greetings on this occasion when we talk of science, technology, and innovation policy to all of you. And also, just about four months from now, we'll be celebrating the 75th Indian Independence Day, a very important milestone in, in, in for this country. Now, this is what I mentioned, sustainable development goals. In that, you have agriculture, you have food, you have education, you have poverty reduction, you have water, safe water, everything. 17 goals. And of that, at least eight, seven to eight of them relate to, in some form or the other, food production. Everything can wait, but not agriculture. This is what the first prime minister of this country, Jawaharlal Nehru, had mentioned. Now, today, globally, agriculture is important because of the about you know, 760 crore people on this planet, 200 crore people, that is 2 billion, still suffer from food insecurity. Aharada asurakshati. Then also we have this pandemic that has come in. So the nutrition status is getting affected. At the same time, when you look at the hunger index, hasivu, hasivu in a suchanka, if you look at the hunger index, we are, you know, we are 94th of the 107 countries. And hunger in different forms, hunger need not be just the physical hunger, malnutrition, iron deficiency, vitamin A, in 57% are in Sub-Saharan Africa and India, and that is Southern Asia, including Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and so on. Now, we will not go into much details, but then globally, we produce about 9,000 million tons of food. And India produces of that 1,000 million tons. If you take the vegetable oils, sugar, meat, milk, egg, fish, and so on. Now, in case of milk, we are the largest producers in the world. And we are, today's topic we have taken up because in many cities today, children would not even know from where the milk comes from. They see milk packets, and it's fine at, the, at their doorsteps. And then the whole value chain, supply chain, from the villages, cattle, fodder, milk collection, aggregation, then processing, then packet packaging, then delivery, logistics. Finally, it reaches the doorsteps and finally the vessels and the stove. Now, this is what is the milk story. And uh, you know, Professor V. Kurian is called the father of white revolution. He aggregated this one liter, two liters of milk to, to something like 188 million tons of milk today in the country. This is the story of Indian agriculture. And that's why most of us need not worry about today's dinner. We are safe with regard to food. And uh, this is just to tell you how important India is in the food production sector. Now, when quickly, when you look at India, the global of the global population of the global water may only 4% water, only about 2.5% of land, but human population nearly 18%. 
and livestock 15%. So on just 4% water, 2% land, we are having 18% of the human population of the world, 137 crore people today, almost reaching 140 crore. And in, for them, we have to produce food continuously. So in every system, school, college, everywhere, we have to talk of agriculture. But that is the most important sector of economy and that feeds all the other sectors of economy. Our total country's area is something like 320 million hectares. Of that, 142 million and the, uh, 1 million hattulaksha. And the 14.2 crores hectare are cultivated. And of that, irrigation is only for 60%. And then don't worry about all the other things, but then what is important is even today, nearly half of India depends on agriculture. We may be, we may be teachers, we may be doctors, we may be lawyers, as I said, but when you look at the total population depending on agriculture, it is nearly 50%, 44%, and you add other things, it will be half. Now, what do we contribute to the gross domestic product? What to Utpanna? It is about 16% and 11% of exports. When it comes to Karnataka, we are very, very fortunate. We have hills in Kodagu, we have plains in Hubali, we have coastal areas in Mangalore and Udupi. So we have 10 agro ecozones, almost everything that India has. And we cultivate in about 121 lakh hectares, and our farming population is about of the six crore population of the state. Nearly one crore are involved in farming because we have we are far we have done very well in IT, BT, and all other sectors. So with regard to farming, it's about nearly one crore people. So we contribute five percent to the country's food basket, and as I said, nearly fifty percent employment opportunities here. Thirty-five thousand crore rupees is the annual contribution to Karnataka's for the, the 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 money basket. And uh, this is what you know I told in the beginning, Mahatma Gandhi's photo. And after that, you see continuously different prime ministers, whether it was green revolution that we talked of, then we have been talking of white revolution, blue revolution, and so on. So this is what you know every government uh, occurs that priority to agriculture. The first photograph on the right is Norman Borlaug, who 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 shared, who brought in green revolution to this country and uh, through the Mexican dwarf wheat. At that time, you all know many of us in the age group of 50 to 60 remember ration shops, long queues, and uh, red rice, and, uh, and all that. So at that time, we were struggling. We were depending on the total import from the from America and other countries. But today, we are self-reliant for because of people like Norman Borlaug. You must have heard the name of Professor M.S. Swaminathan and then similarly Dr. Korean. So all these people have enabled us to be food self-reliant. Don't worry about these statistics. Just to tell you food grains, that is the cereals like rice, wheat, maize, pulses, oil seeds. So totally we produce something like 292 million tons, 29 crore tons of food grain. After that we have vegetables, fruits, and that also edible, they also add up to about 300 million tons. Then milk, meat, fish, egg, and so on. So this is the present scenario. But to meet the growing de demand, in another 10 years, we'll be, uh, we'll, be, we'll be crossing 140 crore population. And by 2050, we'll be 160 crore. So the estimate is we have to produce 50% more food than what we are producing to be comfortable. Otherwise, we'll go back to the days of pre-green revolution. Now, we keep discussing what is the total value of agriculture. Let me tell you, it is more than America. 30 lakh crore. 30 lakh crore is the value, primary value of food produced in this country. And of that, as I said, cereals, pulses, oil seeds, about $100 billion. $100 billion, $1 billion is 7,000 crore. So this will be about 7 lakh crores. Horticulture, again, something like uh, 12 to 15 lakh crores. Livestock fisheries, nearly about uh, a lakh crore. Like this, it goes on. So the point is, we produce 8% of the global food. We export 2%. But the point is, we also are such a large population, so we consume most of the food that we produce. That's where you know, we are talking of 
when when the when the papers you no know, paper if you read the paper once in a while they say we are producing only food grains they talk of 290 plus million tons but what i would like to mention is as i said cereals pulses oil seeds fruits vegetables milk meat fish egg all that put together we nearly produce nearly 1000 million tons of food 100 crore tons of food for 136 crore population so we are producing something like one fourth of the asian food asia dali eshtu na utpadane martivi adu ond kaalu bhaga ee bharata deshadalli utpadane aagta ide now the but the new challenges are climate change nimgella gottide akalika male no rains you know at unexpected times temperatures going up new say, insects and diseases coming then resource land and water degradation we don't get good water you are seeing then migration markets so with all this the world economic forum discussed the first time in 2016 discussed the ag- tropic agriculture so five years back this year the forum will be meeting in singapore and then there we are talking of artificial intelligence and several things in agriculture what is our strength in agriculture that is biodiversity you must be hearing these words repeatedly jaivika vividhyate that is our strength now 10% of the global biodiversity is in this country but the problem is other challenges land and water degradation and so on finally the per capita land holding every indian has only about 0.1 hectare 0.1 hectare 1 hectare is 10000 square meters 0.1 hectare is just about 100 square meters of land and with that we have to produce more and more food as we go along now this is also again just to mention how industry service sector they all have become more important but agriculture in absolute terms is very important though the contribution to the gdp is of the order of 14 to 16% now what is our other main problem is the small farmer hold popula- holder sanna edwali raitaru so per farmers having less than 5 acres of land that is what is more than 86 82 84% so if we have to produce so much food from small holdings and uh, in another 5 years we, today we are about uh, 14 crore farming families which soon we will cross 15 crore farming families so the small farmers will be 87% they will be having having nearly 50% of the land but food has to come from these small holdings whether we like it or not many of us in the villages we have seen how land gets divided every time a family it divides so these are the challenges that indian agriculture has so in this context again you must be hearing words like farmers income has to be doubled more more income has to come how do we do it integration between say for example between crops and livestock between rice fish milk you know, that is cattle or maybe sheep poultry bring all those things together diversify agriculture vividhi karana cluster because we are having such small land holdings so we have to bring those those together 0.1 hectare 0.5 hectare can we make them together and produce one type of crop so you know we can go to the market with confidence then cutting costs because the input costs are increasing so much whether it is diesel or seed or fertilizer so how to bring in more efficiency into agriculture cutting costs and at the same time adding value instead of selling ragi just like that can we prepare something can we add value and sell it so that, you know we have more money coming in so these are all the questions and challenges at the same time as i said climate change and then new stresses as i said new insects and so on more disasters you know cyclone used to be only one <coughs> earthquake was one now then we came we have this ali kallu hail storm for example so like you know more and more disasters are coming in and in that context how can we have insurance in farming now as we go along in the coming years it will be more of cities in different ways it need not be only bangalore uh, darwar and so on but it will be in different forms so so the future is not only field crops horticulture livestock fisheries agroforestry you know karnataka many people are taking to sandalwood like that it would be any of these you know tree, trees tree cultivation so as we go along so the future is 
more from less for more kadime jaga kadime neerinda producing more for for more people largely we produced more of starch from carbohydrate we had to move to protein and health foods and then now we are in the stage of stress agriculture we had to move to secondary agriculture and then molya vardhane and then vishesha krishi so the today's continuum is agriculture to food to nutrition to health to environment and to employment can any of us say that this is not important whether we are whether we are students or teachers or doctors or lawyers as i said at the cost of repetition these six items are the core for this country and this is where we are trying your skill and youth in agriculture now everybody talks of smart smartphone smart city everything smart so the farming also can we make it smart in terms of higher efficiencies whether it is weather water energy whatever can we become more smart and uh, now this is important because whatever we are talking today people ask us questions about what is the carbon footprint for one ton of paddy how much carbon you know you have accumulated or you know how much carbon dioxide you have sequestered you have, you have collected or how much water you have consumed and so on so it is in this context we talk of water budgeting to tell you you know some facts 1 kg of paddy 1 kg batta beliye the kv needs 1600 liters of water 1600 liter water neeru 1 kg batta ke akki nalla akki madadha adinna 2000 liter mele jaasti agutte so that much of water we consume so this is just to tell you the water footprint and how we can become more smart to have, have having more efficient crops having better systems of irrigation and seeing that moisture is not lost reducing evaporation and so on so in this context innovations do not happen only in research institutes it happens in villages see for example across india how people have been conserving water and this is along with educational literacy what we are asking is today science literacy farming literacy so whatever literacy could be in different forms you are all you know engaged in teaching in schools and colleges what we are asking is societal awareness about different different aspects and that's what is uh, important and you see again different methods of conserving water like mulching like polyhouses covering land with plastics now the plastic is good or bad that's a different question we'll we'll come to that in some other uh, discussion then also the jaivika vaividhyate bage maatartidvi biodiversity bage batta on thondre just you take rice today we have more than 95000 types of rice from kashmir to kanyakumari i mean you all have seen white rice and red rice black rice you must have seen i have seen even green rice in chatisgarh so this is a variety we have or when it comes to things like uh, brinjal or maize you know, these are all the, the diversity we have that we try to domesticate breed cultivate and then enhance the productivity similarly today we are mainly worried about protein and for vegetarians almost the only source of protein is milk and pulses dizala dhanyagalu we used to import but today we almost have come to a level of self sufficiency in pulses but oil seeds is still a concern you must be reading about palm oil we import no we still import more than 50% of the edible oils we mainly produce only groundnut oil we all eat in karnataka mostly we all you know mostly in our food soybean oil in central india mustard oil in northern india coconut oil in kerala and other places so apart from that palm oil has become very very important when we that's what we are importing today now in karnataka for example millets are very important as a jola irabodu meke jola irabodu ragi irabodu so these are kinds of things now these are all becoming very important foods in fact including in midday meal scheme we have been emphasizing their importance we don't call them as uh, you know just the ordinary cereals we call them as nutri cereals nutri cereals similarly so so many things that we were eating in the villages earlier are not in the public distribution system so they are going out of food food uh, consumption so that's where we are talking of the orphan crops to future crops anatha belegalinda adanna bhavishyada belegalu anta karitta idivu now so these are many things that you know that are coming back to our uh, our systems and uh, also in spite of the grass food production we have deficiencies of vitamin a iron and so on so there are efforts at fortifying 
like uh, we fortify salt, you know, with uh, whenever we find deficiency, iodine and so on. So similarly, in case of food, these are being enriched. These are new approaches of biofortification. Similarly, you must be hearing about organic foods several times. Karnataka also very important organic state, organic uh, food state. And then people have been asking, so organic foods are good, but to meet the entire demand of so many, so much of population, only organic may be difficult. So we need to use fertilizers, of course, in measured terms, not excess. And this is a picture about organic uh, foods. Now, horticulture, I just mentioned, again, very important, fruits, vegetables, and then uh, floriculture, and flowers, and other thing, and also spices, plantation crops. I mean, these are all very aromatic plants, medicinal plants. So it is more than 300 million tons, 30 crore tons of uh, fruits and vegetables and other things being produced. And in that, Karnataka, Karnataka is known as a milk, silk, horticulture state. We produce milk so much, uh, silk so much, and also fruits and vegetables so much. So these are all just examples of what all we are producing, including potato people grow in Karnataka, though it is a temperate crop. No plantation crops, we all know, those coming from coastal areas or you know, in, in anywhere in the across. Here you are seeing the kind of coconut plantation, then also the tuber crops, um, different types of Gensu, uh, Amorphophallus, Churnagite, and that. Then, so different methods have started. Similarly, spices are very important, very important uh, for both the trade and health. And uh, now high value agriculture, that is where is horticulture coming in in different ways, where we are getting 50,000 rupees per acre in Ragi. Same plots are being used for floriculture with at least five lakh rupees. That's the kind of change uh, that is happening. Or nowadays we have new tree farms, you know, designer crops. You tell what crop to be grown, and uh, what, what what type of uh, you know nutrition should be there, and people would accordingly have designer crops brought in. Or nowadays new trends, we need not have a plot of land. Even in water, we grow crops. They call it as hydroponics, aeroponics, vertical farming. You know, growing vertically need not be if we don't have land, grow vertical with uh, different methods. And also similarly, we have uh, we call it as terrace farming, and uh, that's where you know the interesting uh, items coming up. And this is where we have a connect between agriculture to food, not just food. Today, it is nutritional foods, health foods, functional foods for different ages, for different groups of people. You know, you, are, you, are, you can get today very specified food products for different age groups or you know health issues and so on. Now, we also have problems with regard to you know, depths and diseases. You must be hearing about it, new insects coming in, Insects are important for both pollination for higher production. At the same time, some other insects cause damages. So that is where we are talking of you know, integrated pest management. Also, in our agriculture today, other issues are it could be elephants coming in, it could be uh, nilgai, uh, blue bulls in North India, in South India, monkeys, boars. So there are all different problems. People are addressing them with different methods, but there are issues in agriculture. Coming to dairy and livestock, as I said, 15% of the livestock, we have nearly 20 crore cattle, 10 crore buffaloes, 14 crore goats, 6 crore sheep, and so on. So we are a very rich country with regard to with regard to livestock, and that's what you know is giving us both both protein and also income. We're just from paddy in ragi, we don't we don't get that much, and that's why we are now talking of milk availability and the uh, egg availability and so on. So this is what is happening across the country. And then this is where we also talk of indigenous breeds. Namde Taligalu, Namde Hasu Taligalu. You must have heard about this also, about indigenous breeds, while we have the exotic breeds, Holston, Frazen, and so on. But many of the Indian breeds, Gir, Tarpakar, Red Sindhi, Rati, in uh, in uh, in Kankridge, uh, and so on. So. Uh, Malnad Gidda, for example, in Karnataka. So these are all being improved. So you know they get more milk and value for whatever we are we are investing on. More efficiency. This is what we said. You know, you for every kg of fodder, how much milk do we get? So these are the kinds of calculations that are done. So from poultry to cattle, lot of improvements that are going on. Now when it comes to fish, 
we produce about uh, 14 million tons of fish. Karnataka, fortunately, also has a coastline, 300 kilometers. So we produce both sea fish and freshwater fish. I won't spend much time on this, but it's a very upcoming sector. Aquaculture, people are taking to diversify agriculture in different ways. And then our estimate is today, in another five years, we'll reach 22 million tons. And 10 years, we'll be 25 million tons of fish. We also earn 50,000 crore rupees. Karnataka is also a very important export uh, state when it comes to fish and uh, fisheries products. And this way I mentioned about you know integration. It could be hydroponics, it could be agri-tourism. Now these are pictures from villages in India. This is near Mumbai or this is in the Northeast where you know how people are taking to tourism, agri-tourism to have higher income levels and so on. And now when it comes to local innovations, very important locally how people have been innovating. For example, Tengin Kakila Dike, to climb the uh, uh, coconut tree, simple contraptions and how to pluck coconut given the labor charges and so on. And that's where we also talk of post harvest losses. Yeah, I told you about production, but then what is important is you go to any function, so much of food wasted. So the estimate is one third of the food that we produce, we are wasting globally and in the country. This adds to something like 1 lakh crore rupees every year. So food wastage, can we stop it and add it to our production, our plate? Now, when it comes to recipes in India, more than 17,000, 18,000 recipes, food recipes. Now, the important thing is, how do we produce food? Required food, required type of food, protein, starch, carbohydrate, and then accordingly, the mineral content and many foods require that kind of elasticity and so on. So these are the foods that we need to produce for this population and for these recipes. So now we talk of primary to secondary agriculture. Can we do something more? Pratamika Krishinda, Dvitiya Krishi, and the high value products, can we be bringing out? This was just an example, or you know, you are seeing uh, so say cereals, millets being you know added value, or it could be from coconut, they were only really eating coconut, then the coconut oil, then many other things that have come up from coconut itself, cosmetic products and so on. Or the omega-3 fatty acids, again, very important. Or it could be the fermentation industry, that's very, again, very important from different types of fruits and other base material. Or floriculture, just see how value addition has helped so much in earning higher incomes to floriculture. Or the fibers, we only talked of cotton, Today, banana fiber, pineapple fiber, so every fiber is being brought into textiles. So agriculture is important for food, feed, fodder, fiber, fuel, fish, flour, and so on. Now, this is where farmers are asking, can they become, this picture is from Suttur. A few years back, we had an innovators meet when Swamiji was also there, and 200 innovators from all over the country came, and for three days, they demonstrated their innovations. You can see a Sardarji there. You can see people from Northeast. Now, now the farmers are asking for to be become more smart, have higher income levels, and then they would be like they would like to be called as agripreneurs, entrepreneurs, agripreneurs. Why not agri industry? Why not? Why only all the time only production? Why not into further areas also? This is a few examples of you know innovators in our own state. For example, Chamraj Nagar. You know, we always say low rainfall, very difficult. But even there, we have seen how farmers are innovating agroforestry and other things. So in just one hectare, more than three and a half lakh rupees. Or similarly, in Mandya district, you know, again, difficult. You know, if not all Mandya is irrigated, there are dry pockets also. But even there, how people are making money. Or in Chittadurga, again, low rainfall. In one, one acre, you won't believe, one and a quarter acre, uh, Sri Siddhapa earns more than six lakh rupees. Mainly, not only just growing, value addition, prathamika sankarani, primary processing, and then marketing, and so on. So these are examples to tell people that, you know, agriculture, as is made out, is not always losing a losing proposition. If we are sincere, if we are in the plot and the farm all the time, I have not seen any farmer losing. If we only throw the seed and go away, and then come after three to four months, naturally, there won't be any crop. That is the story most of the time being made out. Now, again, you see, these are pictures from urban allied taking to farming. It could be in Assam, hydroponics in Bangalore, terrace farming in Cochin, or it could be internet farming in Tumkur. The fish uh, 
research unitary systems in Bangalore or in Pune. I can go on, there are so many examples. Now this uh, coconut, coconut is from Mysore itself, where you know the coconut uh, the nuts, you know, they're having a small screw cap and get five rupees more. Because it's easy to drink in the meetings and so on. Or from the, instead of plastic water bottles, bamboo water bottles is are some. So friends, uh, there are so many ways and that's where we are happy that many youngsters are getting into agri and enterprises in different ways. Only thing is we have to teach them. Right, right from school level, we have to bring up today these new new technologies. It could be big data, internet of things, uh, remote sensing, digital artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, blockchain, sensors, robotics. You talk of anything, they all have a place in agriculture. And we are happy that many people who are totally not in agriculture, coming to agriculture to demonstrate some of this. For example, this is a robo climbing the a robo climbing the coconut tree or, uh, or a tree scooter that our own people our own people in Udupi made. So this is where now we are trying to agree incubators and startups. Startups. Now we know startups throughout the country in different uh, industries and uh, enterprises. Similarly, agree startups is also picking up. Today there are 700 startups in uh, all over the country. And in Karnataka too, only two months before we wrote a policy for every startups in Karnataka, we gave it to the state government of Karnataka. Now, many people come and most of them are engineers. And as I said, we also have a policy in place, science, technology, innovation policy. Whenever all of us have smartphones, all of us have laptops, you can read some of these, just, you know, brief documents. And these are important documents. And then are the intellectual property management, because this is important. If we innovate, how do we protect intellectual property? Fortunately, we have a policy in place. And as I said, we also have the national education policy. Of course, I understand, you know, most universities will be concerned. No, uh, national education policy, 2020, right, start from LKG onward. You must be seeing the change in the pattern, you know, that we had, you know, like 10 plus 2 plus 3, that is being uh, rediscussed. When it will be introduced is another thing. But as teachers, we all should be aware of the national education policy. And in that context, agriculture education also. Normally in this country, we used to talk of science, technology, engineering, and management. But with a lot of distance, we have made it a stream. Science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and management. Why not? 50% of the country's population is dependent on agriculture. Why not stream? So very quickly, last few slides. We have nearly 1,000 universities, nearly 40,000 colleges, nearly 10, more than 10,000 uh, institutions of different kinds. Now, this is what is, you know, very quickly, uh, this is what is happening. But when it comes to agriculture, we have uh, more than 75 agriculture universities, and the British started agriculture education in terms of polytechnics. They started middle schools, high schools. Maharaja of Mysore, Maharaj Mysore Maharaj Ruh, Hebbada, Bengaluru Hebbada Dali, one the middle school should be agriculturally. And the Avaga or Yagotit, is to impart into Krishi in that. So, Adu Yuvatra University, GKVK, that school has become today the University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore. That was the vision that people had at, uh, uh, at that time, whether it was Sir MV or Maharaj of Mysore and so on. Now, this is definitely not, not, not very important for this discussion. Now, coming to this, what is important? Why agriculture only as a course? Only BSc, AG, MSc, AG. Why not in every school, every college? You would not uh, believe um, I am asked questions when we travel outside. I went to America, visited some schools, high schools, went to Australia, visited some schools. They asked us, they asked me, you are, a, you are a, a developing country, you are an Asian country, food is very important for you, you are in tropical system, food productivity is much higher. Because you can imagine, in America, nobody can go, grow more than one crop. Whereas in India, we can grow three crops. Two crops are common. More crops, more So why is the awareness in children less? So I asked about their teaching method in Australia. I really saw, I really saw fifth standard. They asked them to simply collect the leaves. Next week or after one month, they simply collected the flowers. Then after one month, they collected the seeds. Then after one month, they collected the fruits. They collect. Afterwards, they're asked to match which leaf matches with which seed and which flower. I was surprised. I saw the, 
I saw around there, around the schools, you know, about uh, two to three kilometers around, whichever trees are there, whichever plants are there, whichever insects are there. They simply collect. This is not happening in college. This is happening in middle school. They said, yes, by the time our children go out of the school, they should be know, they should know what is around us. Of course, nowadays we have environment classes, we have ecology classes and so on. But here, they, to inculcate how important food is, where food comes from, and then they cannot ignore. They said engineering they can like learn later, but not agriculture. Agriculture they should learn from. And uh, if, uh, unfortunately, let me tell you, many of our students, many of our youngsters coming from villages, we cannot milk a cow. Nam raithre kel tare new food kondo hal kariri saaku. And we won't, we won't be able to. So in spite of having all the resources, we are not practical. And uh, I have seen in many households, once we go to school or college, we should not even take the cowden. In one manner, we have to go to the school. Now, this we are only creating complexities, complexes in our own system, inferiority complexes when it comes to agriculture. So the prayer is the civil society should appreciate how important food is and without food, nothing can happen. We can go, we have, we have to go back to import status at that time as we, as we had. So now in schools, in fact, we have written syllabus for agriculture once a week. We are not telling that every day you teach. We used to have moral sciences, we used to have many things. So once a week, one hour, talk about agriculture in schools. So we have talked of rebranding agriculture in schools, special school for children interested in agriculture, vocational training. In colleges, again, as I mentioned, can there be more larger number of people? Agriculture, you know, we lost many bright students to ITBT for about 20 years. But now, let me tell you, agriculture has so much potential, students are coming back. After SSLC, PUC, we get so many queries that I want to come to agriculture. Agriculture means not agriculture only. It is agriculture, animal, veterinary sciences, forestry, horticulture, fisheries, silviculture, 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 agroforestry. So like that, there are so many branches, but the awareness in the society is still so low. Agriculture means oh, simply sowing some seed and harvesting something, but that cannot happen. So through this lecture series also, we would like to, in fact, Swami Vekhananda, uh, youth movement, I'm so happy that you have, you have arranged this. You go to any Ramakrishna mission ashram anywhere in the country. They take village as the unit, starting unit, agriculture as the starting point, and uh, entrepreneurship starts from villages. That's why we are talking about entrepreneurs. So attracting and retaining youth in agriculture, we call it as ARIA in schools, colleges, and entrepreneurs. The enterprise is very important, and your role you may be only 20 people today, 30 people today, whatever it is. Your role is very critical. Talking about agriculture, you know, now and then in schools, in important meetings, in annual meetings, or you know, school days, and all that. Talking about agriculture itself will excite students to take to agriculture. Now, last one or two slides is now some show the Karu researchers in this country are very less. Why we are not progressing well for every and we have only one Hatha Laksha when Jana Sanki gave only in Nura Yate Jana, that is some Shadaku, only 255 researchers per million population, whereas the global average is 10 times more. And that's where we have to excite youngsters at the middle school level, at the high school level. High school level, these, uh, these uh, six years, fifth, fifth to tenth, we have seen is very, very important stage. After that college, there'll be many other diversions. So if we can make you know, some, some imprints on the minds of the students as teachers, we would have done a great service. Yes, everything is important. Uh, physics is important, chemistry is important, biology is important, mathematics is important. At the same time, agriculture is also very important. With these words, what you know, I would like to say is, we have to have an inclusive growth. Farmer should be our partner. Agripreneurship should be in education. I mean, I only got a concern of student exchange. I mean, the, the, the happiness. Now, here, matter the, we should be happy doing it. And that's what is important. Finally, what we are looking at sustainable agriculture through everybody's efforts, science, sense, and skills. Skills are very important today. Today, we are bringing out students in lakhs and crores, but no skills. This is becoming very, very uh, risky for a society like ours. So the skills at the hands. So the heart, head, and the hands are very important. And that's where we are talking of the farmer. He also says, 
ಐ ನೀಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನೀಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಟೀಜ್ ಗೌರವ ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಗೌರವ ಬೇಕು ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಟೀಜ್ ಇನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ವೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ದೇ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಮ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಎನಿವೇ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬೈ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬೈ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸನ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬೈ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ in our minds and then we wish everybody a healthy and happy india thank you very much for your kind concern only to say that agriculture is everybody's business it's not only just the farmer or if you teachers or researchers agriculture just as we each one has to eat food agriculture also is everybody's business thank you very much thank, thank you sir uh, your presentation uh, highlighted the vastness at the expanse of the field of agriculture uh, many of us including myself uh, we hadn't thought of agriculture uh, the, the scope of agriculture included so many things so we'll open up the session now for a few question and answers uh, melly has a question to start with uh, thank you pravin and thank you sir for a comprehensive view on the a state of education uh, agriculture in india my question was um, whenever i visit a school in a village i'm always struck by how disconnected the curriculum is from the surrounding uh, core business of the village which is usually agriculture and um, you are you are highlighted that uh, agriculture should uh, be a, also taught uh, in schools and so on but but i i wonder what your comments are if you could if you're able to take it one step further and even when you're teaching all the other subjects like physics or chemistry or biology or history if that can be um integrated with uh, agriculture for example if you're talking about an example of um, an a class in physics on light can shouldn't that be related to agriculture in some way instead of in some um, in some something else that may be unrelated to the child because the surroundings uh, are are really agriculture focused i just wanted your thank thoughts you. and comments thank on that thank you very that. much thank you very much for this uh, question now you have said it you know uh, like said you said physics an experiment on light the light when we when we are explaining the light travels in a straight way straight in line and so on can we also bring in agriculture food production is mainly dependent on light photosynthesis it is the carbon the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the light you know that so immediately if we tell that light and carbon dioxide and water together it makes food glucose c6h12o6 plus also it, it liberates oxygen this photosynthesis process is so very familiar and common to every you know high school middle schools high school student so if you can relate it to agriculture how food production depends on this as you said similarly we can start with simple things bring say a few seeds germination how it germinates we have we have an experiment in botany or a biology classes but you know it, it stops there it doesn't further related to the happenings in the field how you know there are different types of plants and so on so we don't expect too much but as i said at least once a week one hour dedicated you know talk on different aspects of agriculture in fact we have written syllabus for this right from 8th standard to 12th standard one hour we have given it to the the ministry of education in delhi and let's see how it goes thank you very much thank you sir i had one question uh, sir uh, whether uh, if you look at the focus of the country now whether it is uh, water sanitation hygiene or uh, uh, occasional skills uh, including agriculture that we speak about now in some uh, context if we, uh, my belief is that if we teach science properly uh, in the true sense of actually being explorative and uh, uh, comprehensively actually talking about environmental studies to the concepts of uh, science properly we don't need an additional subject on let's say eco ecology or uh, an agriculture or uh, water sanitation or personal hygiene or uh, health education and so on any comments on that thank you i am not an educationist uh, to say much on that but a limited point is yes you are right if we are able to relate any any anything that we teach 
to something beyond that's happening outside the classroom in the society that would serve the purpose. But today what's happening is we are neither teaching a strong basic science nor you know taking the entire applications to the minds to the to the uh, to the attention of the students we are teaching something so for they also find it difficult to uh, kind of you know they are searching for relevance of what we are talk what we are learning so that relevance so that relevance portion if we can bring it in every class and say that you know of course i see some textbooks where they have tried some of these things but then as a teacher, that's where you know, we require a lot of reorientation to the teachers also. I mean, that's where you know, SVUM and others should do a job. Then whatever we teach, yes, there could be, without application, we will not be doing anything. Even in research, what's happening is they ask us for applications. Otherwise, good enough, you keep publishing papers. Thank you very much. That's the way we are because the economy, the, the money is so, I mean, is so valued that for every investment, we need to have a return. So similarly in education also, if we are able to relate everything that we teach at the end of the class, as you said, five to 10 minutes, we bring in a few things that before the mind, before the eyes of the students with the kind of applications, it would serve the purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, one, of, one of the issues that uh, we seem to be uh, facing is, uh, uh, during call is that uh, children of farmers themselves don't seem to be getting back into the uh, same uh, kind of, you know, they, they don't get into the agriculture sector. And, and the second issue is you also brought up the fact that, you know, the people who have had, uh, people from IT backgrounds have uh, gotten into the, uh, you know, agriculture sector also, they, you know, small farms that they are uh, do, they bring. Uh, but what we are, uh, what I wanted to know is, uh, we, we are not, we don't seem to be integrating all of these things into one consolidated uh, plan or, because one of the other issues also being that, you know, if 40% of the people are involved in agriculture, uh, it also means that you know per capita production also is very low as compared to uh, others in terms of. Uh, so how do we bring all uh, align all of these together, and also how do we encourage children to actually look at agriculture or that itself as a viable career option? Given that. You Thank know, you. The, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, two points to start with, uh, Mr. Kedraman to Mr. Ramesh. Uh, one is the drudgery associated with agriculture. As I said, you know, I gave an example. The mother says, you know, was shouting at the son, you know, don't, you know, don't pick up cotton because you are going to school. Then he might have had to retard. What if he goes to school? What is wrong in you know, picking up cotton? That's, that was the, so just again, so the, the mindset that we have that our farming is associated with drudgery. Say, second point, after all, we do anything for the income that we get. Now, it is not that there is no income in, in farming, but the way land is getting divided in this country. See, if, if a family, if they have five acres of land, if they have six cattle heads, no question they are much better off than any class one officer in, in, in the government. But today, because the land is getting divided so much into fragments, so the, naturally the income from those lands are going down. So these two points, drudgery and the income perception, that income is going down. So these two are forcing people to send to other vocations. Now we have been assessing what is the farm income? What is the non-farm income? See earlier we used to have everything from the farm. Now the non-farm income, maybe he goes for a security job, maybe goes for a garment job, goes to a petrol pump, goes to a hotel and whatever. So now that is becoming one third of the family's income is coming from non-farm. Even if I if I'm a farmer in Mandya, one of the villages, I go to Mysore, I go to Mandya and so on. Now these two problems. Now next question is the, the efficiency in farming. Because the youngsters are going away from farming, only old people are left. With the result, it's a, it's a kind of a vicious circle. I don't invest, I get low income. Low income, I don't invest. Invest is not only in money, in terms of money, in terms of the human labor also. There is no efficient labor available. Now we are bringing up to these, some of these points and I must tell you, we have seen many youngsters after having seen the cities where they have been earning 500 rupees per day, having going back to villages. These examples are there. Second thing is the IT persons, they, they kind of looked at the health sector, they looked at the industry sector, and they almost have done everything there. And now they think that agriculture is a huge canvas. What is the, what is the scale that they have? 
fifty percent of the Indian population. Second is the steps that are involved, which can be easily brought into some processes in IT and IoT. So these are the potential that they are seeing. But having said this, I must also tell you, agriculture graduates are still to come into startups in a big way. It's the engineers who are coming in, and in a way, it is good because one thing that is lacking in farming in India is precision. Precision is not there. So when engineers come in, they bring that element of precision. And why precision is not there? Small farms. If I bring a tractor, I need 50 hectares to be viable. If I have only half a hectare, half a hectare, half a hectare, by the time I move the machinery to another plot, my efficiency is lost. That's when we are talking of clustering, aggregating the resources, aggregate at the resource, aggregate at the input, aggregate at the market. So you know you 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 become a kind of way you can you can command the market. These are the points that are being brought up in ag Indian agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, Meli has a question. Uh, sir, you you mentioned developed countries and how agriculture is included in the school curriculum. I was also thinking that um, in, I've also observed in developed countries one uh, interesting thing, which is uh, the the courses offered in the colleges will be very local to the needs of that community. Uh, like for example, if you take Sargur where SVYM is located and they have been adding plus two um, uh, courses, but some schools have been, become PUC uh, plus two, have been added plus two classes, but they are added with the, either the standard arts curriculum or the standard science curriculum, whereas an agriculture region like that should have an agriculture course and agriculture university should be, I mean, geographically situated where there is a need. So it's easier for students to attend also rather than having to come from Bangalore or Chennai or some other big city. I just wonder what your thoughts were on that and whether there are thank policies you. that are being put in place for that. Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, I must mention that as I said, there, there are 75 agriculture universities that becomes 10% of the total, agriculture, total universities in the country. And we have about 700 colleges of agriculture in, in uh, different parts of the country. And that is far too less. As you said, the access itself, itself becomes difficult. And uh, this is because primarily, most of the agriculture education is in the government sector. Now only the private sector is, has started investing. Now, as much as they did in engineering and medicine and management, that kind of investment has not happened in agriculture. But now, states like Maharashtra, there is a lot of private investments, corporate investments, corporate staking to agriculture schools in remote areas, and uh, to some extent, Tamil Nadu also. So we think in the days to come, realizing the potential of agriculture, we think there'll be more corporate houses coming as they come into agriculture business, they would also come into agriculture education. And you are right, you know, to have, uh, you know, just uh, just for, uh, you know, uh, learning a few, of course, we have what is called as Krishi Vigyan Kendra in every district, Farmers Science Center. There's one Krishi Vigyan Kendra in every district of the country. So uh, farmers normally go there and learn a few skills. But as you said, this effort is required at a much, much higher level. That's where more polytechnics, more schools are, and colleges are being talked of. And maybe in the, in the years to come, this would improve. Thank you very much. Sir, you mentioned about uh, uh, some innovations uh, happening, and uh, but for your presentation, uh, many of us would not even have heard of them. We, while we hear so much about the negatives of or the bad things of agriculture, about farmer suicides and all, we don't hear so much about the positives. So uh, can you uh, highlight one or two cases where uh, we see that in schools, IoT is being introduced to the adult tinkering labs and there are opportunities at school level also for uh, kids to actually participate, get more hands-on. Uh, so yes, have you come across you. any good examples? Yes, thank you very much. And that's where you know, media is obsessed with uh, politics, cricket and Bollywood in this country. 90%. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why, you know, even, you know, literate people, urbanites, we would not know about what's happening in this country. A real, real, the real India is hard to know. You are right. Uh, but now, as you said, you know, these new things, one is it's happening in a few startups. They're making right earnest, whether it's GIS, for example, G geoinformatics and spatial applications, te spatial technology applications that's happening. In some cases, sensors are being brought out. And in some incubation centers, this is happening. But then there are far, far uh, few 
uh, far and few that we cannot really assess their impact. But in the coming years, as I said, a lot of people are coming into agriculture with this idea of bringing in new interventions. So maybe in the course of next five years, that's what we wrote in the startup policy, a roadmap. We think most of, more of it should be happening. And then one kind of a, a, a kind of a phobia for new technologies. Of course, our farmers are quite enterprising. Then you take star smartphones today. You know, most of the rural areas are kind of, I won't say saturated, but quite, you know, into smartphones. So new technologies are not, are not rejected, but then their adoption levels, the feasibility, affordability, these are all a few things that we have to still work out. Thank you. Uh, just to add to uh, your comments, or maybe uh, the day when uh, all of us as educational institutes start accepting a local farmer as a teacher, uh, that would also change uh, the state. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Praveen, uh, we brought, we did this, you know, we brought farmers, you know, accomplished farmers. Yeah, I can tell you so many farmers I keep meeting, even in Karnataka. Mandya, there's one Mr. Krishna. Uh, I mean, so we have brought them as farmer professors in our universities. One is we send uh, you know, students to farm uh, villages for about six months time, four to six months to work with them. Second is we have brought the farmer professors. They come and stay in our you know, colleges and universities for nearly 15 days to one month and then take classes. We said there can be no better person than you because you are 24 seven on the farm. Whereas I as a scientist or a, as a teacher, I go only from nine to five. So I cannot be a better farmer than you. So we are bringing up this aspect also. Uh, Radhika Mam has a question, sir. Yeah. Uh, namaste, Dr. Ayyappan. Very, very comprehensive and very nice presentation. Big umbrella and a lot of food for thought for education, actually. Thank you. I wanted to um, check with you. Uh, uh, while it's very, very uh, alluring, you know, how to um, integrate agriculture into education and ideas are very good. Uh, very closely related to what Mr. Ramesh asked, the rural, uh, the rural population. You ask the children what you want to be; they will anything but a farmer. They would want to go to IT professional, want to become an astronaut, want to become you know uh, whatever. They want to go to the urban, so they look for greener pastures in the in the cities, but they don't look at opportunities to make rural cool. So nobody wants to stay back there. So, uh, you know, the profession just dies a natural death after the farmer. So there is no support really for a farmer. So how does one, you know, take care of this thing? Thank you very much, madam. Uh, in a lighter vein, a farmer tells me, farmers, uh, many farmers tell me, say, my Help grandfather was a farmer. My grandfather was a farmer. My father was a farmer. I am a farmer. Why should my son be a farmer? Whereas a doctor would say, my, I want my son to be a doctor. A lawyer says, my, I want my son to be a lawyer, right? So this, this appreciation is largely, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, rather, this not appreciating thing is be largely because it's an unorganized sector. It's so far, it has not been organized into that kind of an activity. Second is the social prestige. Many farmers tell me I won't get a bride for my son. So I want him to do anything but not agriculture. I mean, you are right. These are the feedbacks from the society. That's where, you know, a lot of campaigns, a lot of awareness programs, and when they actually sit and work out, see, nothing can be greener than the green fields themselves, right? Green pastures, however green they are in terms of money, cannot be green, as green as a paddy field or a rice. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so this is what it is. So we are bringing home these points uh, to say that, and people who have really enjoyed agriculture, who have put in real efforts and earned from agriculture, you can see uh, sincere farmers have never lost anywhere. But the point is the drudgery aspect that is being discussed. But when we talk to IT professionals, they are also putting 16 to 18 hours today. Nobody is comfortable that way and they burn out after eight to 10 years. So, but that doesn't happen in case of a farmer. So we're bringing up these social points also and uh, hopefully things must change in this country. Thank you. Uh, can I just ask a related question? Thank you for that response. But uh, the thing is, what makes their self-esteem so low while they are so work closely grounded to uh, nature? How come their self-esteem and self-worth is so low uh, that they need this is, kind of a basically, validation? Ma basically, madam, agriculture was uh, somehow thought as a skillless enterprise. Anybody can do agriculture. 
this was the mindset this is the mindset even now whereas to do a job you require a sslc or a, a, a degree but whereas to agree in you don't need anything but we have been talking to farmers i have been told by farmers i gave the example of milking a cow the farmer challenged me you milk the cow you require minimum 50 skills to be a successful farmer any 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 a uh, farming activity so he said this this has to be removed from the minds of the people that agriculture is a skillless enterprise because it was considered skillless the respect also went down then that's where the prestige went down that's where farmers are asking for ppp the profit the prestige respect for the farmer in the society and then the partnership this is what you know we are working at let's see what happens Uh, have you have you got any program done for the farmers where they uh, project themselves to be worthy and they have their they they, they have self respect or no. respect for their profession no, absolutely madam uh, one photo i showed you in satur was just an example like this i can bring you hundreds of stories where hundreds of farmers have come together saying that yes we are proud of being a, being in being in farming and we are proud of being farmers we would not let this okay this 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 sector die when I mean, that kind of things but then point is the media let me tell you again again i communication is so weak that you know it's not spread otherwise yes the common thing is when you go to villages yes i want to do something else because they look at our shirt and pant and that's where farmers said you make us smart you are smart your phone is smart you come from a smart city why can't you make it a smart village smart farming and a smart farmer and uh, this is the aspiration that we see as a way forward thank you thank you very much thank you uh, thank you sir uh, just on that uh, final note as as i lead you into the uh, closing remarks uh, as uh, farmers and farms become smarter and uh, you know technology driven we would see that the number of uh, people who are actually engaged in farming would uh, typically come down the international experience has been like that which would mean that you know you would uh, 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 th- that is uh, w- while the per capita production might go up uh, the the per capita employment would come down so is that something that uh, you're also looking at in terms of avenues and absolutely then, absolutely lead into, lead into the closing remarks for absolutely mr ramesh i'll take one minute yeah See, farming has been largely identified with only one aspect of farming that is production of course the government of india campaigns were also earlier like that grow more grow more food grow more grow more so only growing more but now that's why i said 75 years of indian independence but then now we have brought out in farming which are all the sectors that we have it could be input management i did not show that slide input management just bringing seed fertilizer water power that itself is one sector actual farming that is you know sowing seeds irrigating and then that is one sector plant protection animal health management is another sector harvesting with mechanization bringing in these new technologies another sector post harvest post harvest management is so very important that's where i talked of post harvest losses silage it could be it could be in some of those processing then it comes to storage proper storage proper handling packaging value addition so we have brought out so from seed to market bijadinda marukatte varige from seed to market we have projected at least a 100 different possibilities in farming and that's where now we are talking of secondary agriculture primary agriculture is only producing food but actually the farmer has to be involved from seed to market and that's where he has hundreds of things and that's where people student uh, the children and the youth are coming back they thought farming means getting into slushy mud sowing something and after 3 months harvesting no no i won't like that job but then farming has more so many more things outside the farm and this realization is slowly dawning on and i'm sure you know this thing will be appreciated thank you very much thank you sir i, I think uh, during the uh, conversation you mentioned that you also have a curriculum that you uh, uh, structured for uh, schools uh just wanted to know if it would be uh, uh, possible for, for you to share right, it with uh, so I, that I, I, at least we could we can definitely implement it in two of our schools the vsoe I, and uh, I, I, i'll check uh, mr ramesh it was in delhi i'll try to get it and try to get back sure so thank you thank you very much and i would now request uh, dr kolegal sharma to propose the vote of thanks and uh, this vote thank you sir 
and uh, it has been a tremendous uh, um, lesson to all of us to see that the what is fundamental to our lives uh, we have to bring it back again as a central uh, uh, theme in our uh, lives and uh, yes uh, i would like to just say if one sentence here i have some friends who have taken to farming services as a uh, entrepreneurship and that is something you know that can come up in a long way and in urban areas where you know they have uh, you know been serving various people who are interested in uh, uh, horticulture by, or uh, you know farming but uh, they are not they do not have the skills so these people are, as advisors or even as entrepreneurs go and set up terrace gardens and other gardens and this is one of the things that uh, is coming up in the urban uh, environment where we are talking about uh, when we talk about employment in the agriculture sector so there are many uh, such areas and i thank you for uh, pointing out uh, these uh, possibilities of uh, increasing employment uh, and of course uh giving the dignity due dignity uh, to the uh, sector that is there and uh, thank you very much sir, for sharing uh, for spending a hour of your valuable time with all of us and uh, educating us on this aspect and uh, we wish that more children get back into the agriculture sector thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you uh... Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Thank you, everybody, for uh, yet another session that you had of uh, Guru Mantra. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it as much as uh, we did in bringing uh, this to all of you. So thank you, and, uh, and uh, thank you, sir, once again for uh, thank you very much. engaging such nice things. Thank you, everybody. Give food for thought. I think, everybody. Thank uh, you very much. Go back to, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody, and bye-bye.